Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, another game against the Seahawks as usual. Going against my vaunted Chicago Bears. Um, I guess the guy's against the uh, 217th ranked player, I believe, in Madden for this game. Right now my rank is currently around 6,000 plus. Um, what I've noticed with the uh, higher ranked folks is they, they tend to play like a lot of games. So I think like, you know, close to the number one ranked players, I've probably played like close to 500 games already. And Madden's only been out since what, August. So like my total win loss probably doesn't even equal this guy's like loss. So the more games you play, the more you, you do better in terms of the ranking. But generally, of course, you're supposed to, you know, the, the higher ranked player you play, you know, the supposed better challenge you're supposed to get. So here I'm on defense. I'm just giving him my base defense to see what, you know, he comes out in. And uh, McPhee breaks through two, two guys and puts uh, Wilson on his back. So here on third down, uh, he's out in uh, five wide. Nobody blocking. You already guys know what I'm coming with. Five on six. Down he goes. He calls no huddle because he sees what I'm in. And, oh, I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm going to call a timeout. He's on fourth and long, so I can play coverage now. So, you know, down to cover four. He can't beat me deep. He can take everything underneath. He tries to sneak out. I chase him. He forces one. And I bat it down. I get the ball right here in his uh, nine-yard line. On offense, I go. Gerald run play. You see he's controlling his uh, middle linebacker. You guys know how I play. If you control your middle linebacker, I'm going to... I'm gonna confuse them. I'll throw like routes at them just to see which one they choose. So here's just you know, I'm trying to see if I get my X deep, but then he has the guy playing underneath him, so I get sacked. So like I said earlier, I already know he's gonna play with his middle linebacker, so I have to send routes against his middle linebacker. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send number 17 Inman. I'm gonna send him at him, but then the rear route is in the back. It's in the back of the end zone. There he goes. Takes him out. Look at the, look at the end zone. This guy's wide open. Touchdown. I did that a number of times in this game, man. It didn't see like it didn't seem like my opponent was keen on what I was doing. I just run receivers at him and then the real route's usually behind uh, the guy you selecting with the middle linebacker, so it makes it difficult to cover. You just have to play like the computer over the top maybe to help out a little bit. So they go out, I'm up seven zero. So he's back on offense again here. Delay a game. Yeah, I gotta leave the spell on this in so you guys know why they're starting off first and 15. I also gotta watch out for Wilson running out of the pocket too, so I have my guys playing contained. So yeah, with this play, like I said, if he doesn't block his back, I'm going to be in his quarterback's face. But I don't think he knows that yet. He's still worried about me selecting my guy on top. He's watching about that, but then boom, safety. Like I said, like I told you guys earlier, I don't use ebooks or practice special blitz. I just use what the game provides and, you know, and, and play it play it as, as just that. Like that, that blitz right there is a simple six-man six blitz. It's just that he has five five down linemen. If he doesn't put a uh, a running back to block him for his uh, quarterback, the quarterback has to account for that last guy blitzing. So it's not nothing special I'm doing. I just select my play and, and just go. Although to the average looker, if I don't explain it, they're gonna think I'm doing some type of uh, ebook blitz or something. It's just a basic six over five. That's it. Not, nothing special. All right. Now I'm starting to notice is cover two. He's going to be stuck in cover two for majority of this game. You know, with with the Seahawks, it's just a tough defense to 
it's a beat. So I have to find plays that I have, like uh, this play right here of. Uh, see which one is four wide receivers. Oh yeah, see what I told you earlier. But this, I don't know. I was supposed to, I guess, lob the ball over the linebacker, but you know the reason why I did a bullet pass because you know look how far he's away from the linebacker. I don't expect him to pick that off, but oh well. He got an interception, so I'm not really gonna complain much. I'm just gonna just uh, get back on defense and try to see if I can stop him from getting in the end zone. Well, yeah, I think I saw like Rex Dixon, who's like the EA game designer. Somebody was complaining about something like that on Twitter. And Doc Rex was like, well, you should have used the lob pass. Right. But you got to imagine, I'm playing with the Chicago Bears. Like, my receivers, they're not going to hold on to the ball if the ball takes forever to get to them. If they, if they get touched, sometimes they just breathe by my wide receivers and they'll just drop the ball. So I'm trying to do a bullet pass before, you know, he gets smacked in the face for catching the ball. That's why on that end zone catch, I had to press X to fall down as soon as he cut the ball so I don't get hit. Because all my receivers got to do is get touched and they'll just drop the ball. But, like I said earlier, you know. Pretty sure on his hand, he's like, hey, I got an exception, so, <laughs> you know, the game is always great when he favors you, so I'm not going to complain, because I'm pretty sure I've been on the receiving ends of stuff like that before anyway, so, you know, he's an exception. I, I go back on offense here. Yeah, so right now in my mind, I'm already thinking he's already in cover two. He, this has to be cover two because he's been kind of doing that. So I'm trying to run against it. You know, hopefully he'll switch up and play someone else to stop the run. So I think I hit him up with like either three straight runs, I believe, just to see if he'll move out of this coverage. But, you know, like most people, they're determined to stay in their coverage. So and I'm already two runs. I'm already at 50. So you, I'm, you're thinking he's, he'll get out of it. At least that's my thought. At least, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run in against it again. Let me see if he's still in it. Okay, he decided to get out of it finally. That's the low pass or high pass. Because I know the middle linebacker was right there in the middle, so I don't want to get picked off again. Oh, I should have stayed with my blockers, not cut back in. Alright. I'm going to throw here. Or like I told you earlier, he's, he's in cover too, so watch the left side of the field by a 20 yard mark. That's going to be the opening. See the opening right there? So, Third on inches. Back to run. He's trying to grab. Come on, Lugard, and get a first down. But just remember what I told you guys about his middle linebacker and this cover two that he keeps playing. I'm gonna get him. I'm just, I'm just waiting for my opportunity. Call it audible here. And this is what I mean when I say I put routes against his middle linebacker to draw him away. So I get out the pocket here. See, because I'm trying to pull his middle linebacker away, but in the back end, you get to get that guy open. This middle linebacker moves out the way. So now I'm thinking I'm, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm playing against the Seahawks. The Bears playing against the Seahawks. I'm doing pretty well. Then I lose concentration, and this happens. So just like that. <laughs> Went from a nine point lead down to a two point lead. All that work I just did just now just down the drain off one return. So I'm I'm back on offense again. Trying to recover my lead. 
because he's a special returner. He has to have that approval from his special teams coach's head coach to bring it out of the end zone. But let's be honest, a lot of times when they bring it out of the end zone like he did there, they don't have approval. I mean, I, I think a lot of times they do, but correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes it's just a guy getting a feel, right? You're exactly right. What's the old adage? Sometimes... And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. It's a good call by him. Let's go downside blitz. That's where he's trying try to stop uh, play action. Blitz on the outside and play pass. Select play pass, which I think R2 and up. That way your blitz can go after the quarterback as opposed to going for the running back. And this is like another way to uh, beat cover two as well. Is always have an underneath route so he can draw the cornerback on the left side of the field. I'm going to send my running back in motion on the left. And I'm going to put him on a short post route to the sidelines. That way he can hold the cornerback down so I can hit my box over the top. But then um, I think I took my eye off of it and I missed the read because I was watching for the rush. But he was open. He ended up being open. So, got artist to your arsenal. I watched the cornerback come back down. See that? He's wide open. So that's one way to beat cover two. If people like cons consistently keep showing you cover two all the time that they don't want to get out of it, and that's one way you make them get out of it. And if they don't, if they don't, if they don't uh, get out of it, just keep doing the same thing over and over again until they move. So I don't mind people running the same plays over and over again. It's just that when you find a way to stop it, you think, you know, they would change things up, and I just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So it's another lapse in defense. And just like two big runs, and, you know, he's got the lead. So a game which was like maybe a minute ago. I was up 16 to 7. <laughs> just like that. He's up 20, 21 to 16. Just like that. So it's like, you know, the game is, you know, you take on a thing of, of their own sometimes when you make these kind of mistakes. So I've had two mistakes now and I'm down 14, you know, I've, I've let him score 14 points. I'm just trying to salvage, I'm just trying to salvage what I can. I, at this time I was thinking he was going to get the ball after half. But when you know the second half started, I realized you know I kicked off first. I forgot I kicked off first. But this is just pure luck. I thought it was in cover two here. I was going to send him to the sideline, but I decided to send him up the field to gain more yardage. Because remember I told him cover two, there's that hole by the sideline by the. But he's playing man, so I just decided just to sneak. And call time and I just, you know, I don't want to even risk it anymore. I just kick my field going, going to the third quarter. I'll start commenting again once the uh, third quarter starts. So it's funny when you like watch like YouTube videos and you hear people complaining about like nanos. I mean, yeah, they were a problem in the past, but I think yeah, they've done kind of a good job in like limiting some of the nano blitzing that you usually see. The only problem that people have now is just specialized blitzing that people get off of ebooks. And but if you if you can recognize them and see them when they're coming, a lot of times you can counteract like some of them. Not saying all, but some of them. You know, the only thing that I do see when you watch like professionals play, like you know, with esports and whatnot, is they consistently run the same kinds of play over and over again. I think I watched one over the weekend or two weeks ago. I mean, and it was just bunch and one wide receiver to the left or to the right and send him in motion and just keep running the same play over and over again. It doesn't really make for interesting viewing, like to be honest with you. Because you're not really, you know, besides the people doing it, you don't really learn anything from it. Like, you don't get anything from it. So when you see that, when you see it from an outside perspective, it looks, it looks bad for the game. 
So when I play, I just try. To, that's why I break down what I'm doing, my thoughts, and you know what I think the opponent is trying to do and what I'm trying to accomplish. That way, you can see like you know how you're supposed to sort of kind of play the game at its base level. So, well, we start third quarter. I got the ball, and I'm still dealing with his cover too. Still, so let's see how I try to manage it. And that's one of the plays I was talking about right there. That that opening that's in the cover too. It's between the corner and the safety that you have to hit. If you make a miss on that and you get hit, it could turn out to be an interception or drop passes. Because you only have a short, like a limited window to throw the ball in. But the premise though is attacking the safety. Finding ways to attack the safety. I just hadn't worried about my slot receiver <laughs> because of the play I just called previously. Okay, dedicated to that cover too, that's for sure. Like I said, the, the, one of the vulnerable parts about cover two is the run because the safety have to play so high that you can, you can run against them. And this place also open to cover two. It just depends on how fast... Uh, his right cornerback comes down to it, but I was lucky. I was able to get it to my guy. That's some like playing zone blitz right there. I don't know what my guy was thinking here. Like, just hold on to your block. If I get around him, uh, I could have gotten a, got a first down. I think I caught T.S. Yeah, him on the post. So it's more like cover three. There you go. First out. Oh, he's, that's that same play. He sacked me on earlier. He's just playing man right here. He's just man. So I'm waiting for Box to come back down. It's the opening. Oh, Trubisky, 13 of 15. At least I'm moving the ball again. It's a big drive right here. Because if I can score on this drive, then all I have to do is stop him once. You know, it's game over. And to this point, I don't think he's ever, he hasn't really done anything on offense. He's had two big scores, he had the return, and he also had the long run, so he's the one that has the pressure because he hasn't really been on offense really, so like now it's do or die, like he has to show me what he has on offense. If he can move the ball like I just did just now, then you know, good for him. But yeah, you have four minutes and he has to show me what he has, like he hasn't really done anything. The two, the, um, twice he's been on offense was off of a turnover. And the other, the other time, I, I think I sacked him twice and got a safety. So this is actually a real opportunity to be on offense and show me what he has. So let's see what he does. Like I always say earlier, I'd rather play defense. I like playing defense than then offense. If I score on defense, I'd rather do that than score on offense. Just anticipating run. And this has to pass. Oh, yeah, and I also got to worry about his uh, quarterback getting out the pocket, too. That would have been another big run for a touchdown if he missed that tackle. Okay, I see he's running double post, tight end, and uh, oh, from the last play, he's tight end and he's running back. So I'm, I'm watching for that, too, again. If I see him come on 2 1 2 one more time. Yeah. So I'm not right now. I'm really watching for his running back out the backfield. Yeah, I'm waiting for it this time. There he goes. Two and two again. So I can only anticipate he's going to do the same thing again. So 
I'm waiting. There it goes. Same thing. Drop back. What I did that time was I blitzed my lineman to the right because I knew uh, Wilson was going to try to sneak out of the pocket. So, anticipating the same play again. It must be his go-to play or something. Let's run the same play again. Let's take this tight end. Let my outside guy take the uh, running back. And that's fourth down. So, of course, I'm going to... I'm trying to see if he comes out in 2 1 2 again, I'm going to pick the same play. But if he comes out in 1 1 3, I'm going to blitz him. Because I'm, I'm going to guess he's not going to block his running back. So this is just guess on my part. I see he comes out in 1 1 1 3. So this right here is just straight guess. I'm going to guess he's not going to block his running back. So I'm blitzing. Same play again at 6 over 5. If he doesn't blitz that running back in his face, turn the run downs. Simple. It's just simple stuff. I say he's been on offense most of the game, so I already know all, these, all of his tricks. He's going to stick in cover two and play from cover two. But then also, since I know that, I'm going to I kind of sort of kind of use that to my advantage when, I'm, when, I'm, when I when I, uh, when I get on down to throw the ball. At least I have that knowledge. This is Howard on second down, and he'll fight forward so to about the 27-yard line. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third, third and down. Long. Remember the play I told you earlier I've been getting him with? I send the slot against his, um, his middle linebacker. But in the real route, his box, I'm going to make uh, right. I'm going to put him in the in, in post. He's going to chase after uh, X, I mean, uh, triangle. So he goes after triangle, that goes right open. We realize it's too late. <laughs> first down. <laughs> Trying to run the clock down. That would be big if I got through. I know he's blitzing his linebackers. Try to call a slant here in the middle. That's really the end of the game right there, really. Only has one timeout. All I have to do is three straight runs, and you know the game's over. Third and final stoppage here as we step aside. They go with Howard again. And not much running room. Down to the 30. That's it, folks. I think that shows rank here. Yep. 291, actually. All right, guys.